Hey guys, this is Nighttime bringing you something a little different than usual. As you may know, with the release of the iOS 14, people with iPhones and iPads can finally now know what it's like to have custom icons on their home screens. Several custom icon sets have been released since then, and I ended up making one of my own based on Persona 5. But it's a little tricky to set all of this up, so I wanted to lay out just how to do it. I'll let you know the easiest way to set up these custom icons and also larger widgets afterwards, so let's take a look. First and foremost, you want to download the pack itself. I've left a link in the description to the shop, and you can purchase them for iOS or Android. It comes with 40 icons, wallpapers, and widget images that make your phone look fancy. So there's a couple of ways to do it. If you're downloading directly from your phone, I recommend you use Safari if it's on an iDevice. For Android, you can simply unzip the folder on your phone. Personally, my own method is to download them onto your desktop, unzip, and put them into a Google Photos album. From there, it's easily accessible from your iDevice, and you can download them all at once from your photo gallery. I'm sure there's other methods to sync up photos, but this has always been the easiest for me. With them on your phone, you want to find this app, the Shortcuts app, already located in your iDevice. From there, you can see all the shortcuts that I've already made, but I'll start one from scratch. Under All Shortcuts, hit the plus sign here and add action. Search for Open App and select it. To make the process a little smoother for the next apps you want to add, touch it where it says Scripting and make sure that it's added as a favorite. Where it says Choose, tap it and find the app that you want to apply the new icon with. Uh, I'll go with Discord for this example. Tap the three dots in the corner and then name it. After naming it, select Add to Home Screen, and on this menu, select the smaller icon over here and find your custom one in your photos. I have an album dedicated to this to make it all a little bit easier. Once you pick it, rename it right here, and you can even see what it looks like on the home screen. You can leave it blank, but I just choose to make it the default name. Finally, just tap on Add and you're done. It'll be on the home screen as its own app, and you can move it around wherever you want. Something you'll notice is that when you tap on the custom icon, the shortcuts app will pop in for just a second. It's kind of inconvenient, but it's the best that we can do for customization on our iDevices as of right now. One small trick that can help lessen it is under settings. On accessibility, right now I have reduced motion off, but if I turn these two on, see the difference? It's a little quicker and has less motion going on, which might be preferable to some. So with the first custom map applied, if you go back to shortcuts and hit the plus icon and add action, you'll see that open app is under your favorites. You can pick it from there easily and the process starts all over as before. It does take a while to do each one, but I feel that the end results are all worth it when you have the custom icons all finally set. If you're new to all this, you might be wondering how and why these massive images are here. There's a lot of apps that can do this now, but I use Widgetsmith for this. So here's a quick tutorial on how to set up your own photos and the ones included in the pack. We're going to open Widgetsmith right here and set an image up. We're going to add a medium widget, so select it, tap it again, and scroll a ways down to photo. Then tap selected photo, and it's the same deal as when you were picking an icon earlier. From here, go back and name it if you want, and then save. When on the home menu, hold a blank spot to make the icons jiggle, and then the plus sign on top. You may have to scroll to the very bottom for Widgetsmith. Tap it and select the size that you were setting up earlier, in this case being medium. If the one you just made doesn't show up right away, you'll have to hold it and pick it from the list, and you'll be free to move it around where you like. You can easily delete them like any other app in case you'd like something fresh. If you want to be a little fancy, you can even set the date and time. When adding a widget right here, you can make it photo, day, and date instead. Let's pick that. If you picked your image, you can adjust the alignment, font style, and color. Save it and it's good. A uh, quick note, this alignment option used to work before uh, the most recent update, but is currently missing it right now for small widgets. 
Uh, I can only presume it's going to be fixed in the next update by the developers of this app, but for now it's a small inconvenience. But speaking of small widgets, I've actually set this up so you can change it depending on the time of day. By picking timed widget, you can set multiple images to change at certain intervals throughout the day. Once the app allows it again, you can set a nice day and night calendar like so. But for now I hope this medium widget will do. And that's pretty much it for the tutorial. If you want to purchase and download these yourself, a link to the Gumroad is available below. These took a long time to make and are pretty much nearly all custom made or up res using much of the PS4 theme icons as a base. With that in consideration, they're going for $30 for 40 icons and all the wallpaper and widget images you've seen here bundled in. Even if you don't purchase these, you can still catch a lot of the mobile wallpaper, banners, and other fun stuff I design on my Twitter, at Evernight Studio, also linked below. Thanks so much for watching, and until we meet again...